Hello everyone and welcome back to another chat here with Numerous Education. My name is Niall Hannigan and I'm the PRO here at Numerous Education and today I'm delighted to be joined by Georgie Kelly who's a current Bohemians footballer. Georgie, how are you getting on? Not so bad Niall, thanks for having me. No problem, looking forward to the chat now. So um, um, I suppose we're, we're delighted to have you on um, coming off the, the back of a successful year for yourself personally. Congratulations on getting Player of the Year there. Cheers, yeah, it was... Um... It was a great honour, like, uh, and a really good year. It was a mad year. Um, from a great run in Europe, like, what kind of hit, which kind of kicked the kicked it off for us. Um, but yeah, no, fantastic year, long year, but um, enjoyable, yeah. Yeah, very good. So I suppose we'll just be kind of having a chat about your own experience playing playing football, um, all around Ireland, and obviously being able to balance the the academics along with that, in terms of studying at UCD and also at um the Michael Smurfer Graduate Business School. So, um, just kind of. Tell me what you're getting up to at the minute, Georgie. How are you keeping? Are you looking forward to a bit of a break over Christmas? Yeah, um, we finished up there about two weeks ago when the cup final was our was our last game. Um, so then, uh, since then, lads would have probably three, three to four weeks off, like a month off at the end of the season. But um, I have exams, so I've been flat out for the last, say, three weeks. Uh, just finished there a few days ago. Um, so I'm kind of taking a bit of chill time now for a week before I kind of start back into like running and, and doing different bits, yeah. Not so bad. And they're all online as well. We were just chatting about that earlier. Yeah. yeah all, all exams were online. Thank God. Yeah. Not so bad. That's grand. Um, so I suppose kind of we'll go back to the start. Georgie, you're from Donegal yourself. Um, as well. We don't want to make it too Donegal oriented here now. But um, so you went back going back to the start. Who did you kind of grow up playing for and, and and how did you get on with those teams when you were a bit younger? Yeah. Um I grew up my local club was Alia, which is just outside Bunkrana in Donegal. Um but I grew up playing all sports. Um, I grew up, you know, loving GA, loving hurling. Um, I was athletic. I used to run for Finn Valley as well. I don't know if you know of Finn Valley. Um, but that they were kind of my main stake until I was probably 15 or 16. And then uh, I'd say I think it was around 16, um, I got the chance to go in and play on, for Derry City because I'm living kind of on the border. It's right beside me, Derry is. So went down there, played for a couple of years with Derry. Um, and decided then they kind of wanted to go to college. Um, I think we kind of went from there then, yeah. Yeah, so I suppose when you're kind of getting to that level, um, playing for Derry as well, you kind of have to drop off the other sports, I presume, and just the yeah. commitment gets too much, yeah. Yeah, got too much. That's At the time, I was part of uh, Declan Boner's minor panel uh, okay. at Tony Callahan. Yeah, we had a good team as well, but okay. I remember having to make that decision both teams were training like three, four nights a week. So I had to decide which I needed to drop one. And I wasn't as good as Gaelic. Like I wasn't as good. It probably wasn't even in the starting 15. So I kind of, it was, it was an easier decision than, than if I had to be a little bit better, you know, but so that's, that's, that's the way it went. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. That wasn't the team that got to the Ireland final, was it? Well, I was, I was second. Yeah. That was yeah. <laughs> I went to watch some then in Crook Park, like, but what can you do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so I suppose you, you mentioned earlier that you made the call that you wanted to go to college um, and be able to, to kind of along with playing the, the high level sport that you were playing. What were kind of the options then, I suppose, looking at maybe scholarships for, for programs for, for university? Yeah, funny enough, um, I had, I had at the time I wanted to, I had a couple of, obviously you're doing your leave certain yet, you pick a first or second choice, but uh I didn't think I was going to get UCD and the, my, the course that I picked. I had my commerce degree as, as my first choice. Um, I didn't think I was going to get it. I thought I was going to get my second choice in Maynooth. So I had gone to Maynooth and, and met with their the head of sport or whatever. And I got, I got accepted on a scholarship there. Um, didn't have anything sorted for UCD at all. Uh, and then last minute, I ended up somehow getting, getting the points and getting into the commerce degree in UCD um with nothing so I, I went I obviously just kind of went for it. that education part of it kind of came for me I wasn't going to college to play soccer like even really at Manith I was yeah. that was kind of a side it was it was more I was going to get a degree more so than going to play soccer at a good level like so I, I ended up going to UCD happily like um with no scholarship no nothing sorted at all and then I was probably there a few weeks and I think someone from Derry City contacted UCD uh that i was there they didn't know they didn't really know i was there at the time so i was just kind of beating about my own like um with nothing and then after a few weeks i i kind of got better in and i trained with them a little bit and then they offered me a scholarship then for the first year and kind of just went from there kicked on then very good yeah. it works. it's funny how it works like yeah you know? exactly yeah i know i that's interesting because like 
I suppose it's probably better. You nearly they they came to you. I suppose like I just yeah. There was no. I didn't have the. There was no process. Well, I know what UCD. They have the like an Ad Astra scholarship as their main, and that's very hard to get on. I wouldn't have got that anyway. Um, so that that made it kind of like oh, I, I kind of had it in my head like oh, I wasn't going to get a scholarship there anyway. So I'll go and and kind of just you know see how it goes like you know. But yeah, lucky yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. Just going back to your leaving cert, I suppose, as well, like getting into the commerce degree, you know, you know, straight through. You obviously had your head, you know, focused towards the, the studies as well at the same time, even when you were training three or four nights a week with Derry. Like, how did you kind of balance that throughout your time with leaving cert? Um, yeah, it was difficult. I was kind of on the fringe. At that stage, I was on the fringes of Derry's first team as well. Um, and so I was kind of in and out training with the first team the odd night. But um, when I, leaving cert time, Derry, Derry, I was really good like that. They were they would give us weeks off that we wouldn't have to train. If you were doing your leaving cert, they would just say, no, 100%. They would, they would be kind of, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be like clashing because they would be all, they would be just let us go and do your exams, do your study and whatever. And as you say, yeah, thankfully I had, uh, I always kind of for some reason had, had that driving that I wanted to go to college. Like even at the time, Derry had offered me a, a two-year pro deal right, okay. to play professionally. Like, and it didn't even, it wasn't even a decision because I always just wanted to go to college. I don't know why. I don't know what yeah. that was. But uh, yeah, at the time, so it was fine. I was just set on going and getting away. I think half of the half of the battle was I wanted to get away from home more so than just, right. go, you know what I mean? So rather than stay locally and maybe go to college, I wanted just to get away and get out of there. So um, that was always the plan, yeah. Yeah, very good. So I suppose looking at your time in UCD, you know, going through your, your degree in commerce as well as playing football, how did that go for you, I suppose, on the pitch, first of all? Yeah, it started, started a little bit slowly. Um, my first kind of year, six months there, uh, I couldn't really break into the team. I was like, him and I had kind of on the verge coming on, different things. Um, and then, I can't really remember what kicked out. We won, are we on the college so UCD is a little bit complicated the way it works too. There's college team and then there's the senior soccer team that plays in the league of ireland but mo that's more or less the same team kind of with a few outsiders that would play in the in the senior team but then majority of the college team make up the senior team as well so there's a little bit of a mix but the striker at the time wasn't in college the striker for the main team so i got to play in that college team and we ended up doing well um and won one of the collingwood titles or whatever my first year so that kind of gave me like a little in that oh, the lads could kind of see that all right he's he's, he's not the worst um yeah so the following season then that, that other striker left and I ended up being being the main striker then and then played for another two, three years then after that. So it's great, like it's a great time there. Brilliant, yeah. And and how did you kind of find playing with boys from all around the country? I suppose that's kind of one of the beauties of, of playing in, in university and playing in college where you're you're out of your home patch and you're playing with boys from all over the country. Do you like do you learn things from other people as well? Or like how do you do you do you, do you like playing with boys different styles and from different places as well? I would, yeah, you'd mix <clears throat> with college and even with my degree as well. So you're mixing with, um, like, it's, it's a, there's a big course called Commerce, I think there's two, 200, 250 people on it. Like, yeah. so you're mixing and mingle with all people from all over. Like, um, so that's not an issue at all. That wasn't, that was fine. The lads are all dead on. Um, as you say, you had lads from everywhere, you had lads from Galway and Kerry, all like UCD kind of attracts the best of, of the kind of college students who want to go to college and play at a decent level. Um, so you have lads from everywhere, like, uh, and there's a really good mix there. But um, now that stands the as well. Then, like, I remember I left UC, so I'm kind of skipping ahead. But I left UCD then to go into Dundalk or sign for Dundalk after a few years, and like that was a Dundalk side who I would have grown up with the last few years watching them, like, and when watching them playing in Europe and winning titles. So yeah. for me then to step in, I was only a kid, like, I was only twenty or twenty one, finishing college. Yeah. So I wouldn't step into the changing room then. Um, and to be able to kind of mix and socialize and make friends, it's 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 daunting enough. Like, you know, you're coming out as a young lad from a college team of young lads into a changing room of grown men, like who are winners, you know what I mean? Like it's um yeah. it was a big step, like, but um that diversity in, in, in college teams helps you mix and uh, uh you know, just helps you mingle a little better with people, like it makes it makes the whole that tra that transition easier then, like you know. Definitely, yeah. So just kind of talking about that move, I suppose, how, how did that all come about? You know, you come to your end of your time in UCD, I suppose, playing football, and then you're looking, right, what's the next step, I suppose, in terms of the, the footballing career? How did that move come about? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I had a good year the, the my, in my final year before, uh, 
you know, before my time I, I was graduating. Um, and I remember it was in the it was January, so in the January window, that's when League of Ireland club players can sign and move to different clubs or whatever. But my degree didn't finish till the July. So um I was I was kind of in limbo whether to should I go. I was obviously done that came in and wanted to send me in the January. Uh mm -hmm. But I kind of wanted to finish the degree as well. So I ended up pitting it off, told them no, turned it down, like, and they went and signed another striker in January. So I had kind of thought, like, all right, my chance is probably up. I'll probably not get that move again, you know. Um, but then I just, uh, I don't know, what, however it worked out, then I graduated in the summer and and the option came up again. Uh, it was Stephen Kenny at the time was was a Dundalk manager. Um, yeah. And he, yeah, he got in touch again. I don't know if it didn't work out, luckily enough, <laughs> for my case with the other striker. So that, that, that slot came up again, and uh, and luckily it worked out. I was very lucky. When thinking think back now how that worked. Like, I was really lucky because to turn that down, he wasn't happy with me turning it down earlier at the time. He thought, you know, and I, you know, yeah. he, didn't, he didn't take it well, like, that me, yeah. me turn that down because he was kind of going to let me try and commute up and down and try and finish the degree, but... I, I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to finish it out properly, like because your final year and it's kind of it's intense, like um. Yeah. So I didn't want to be going to and fro with exams and everything. So, but now I just think even just thinking about it now, yeah, I was very lucky how it worked out. Like, yeah, I say he didn't take too well. Now, <laughs> turn no, he doesn't really no. get rejections. Like, no, <laughs> yeah. you know, but <laughs> very good. So you, you kind of mentioned there about coming into your final year of, of commerce. Obviously, it's it's a tough enough degree in terms of the, the workload that you're doing. What were kind of some of the aspects of it that that you really enjoyed? You know, it's quite a broad degree, I suppose. So some yeah. of the, the areas that you were interested in. Yeah, see, part of the reason I, I chose that degree was because how broad it was. Like it covers accountancy and then it covers economics, finance, marketing. Literally, it covers the floor of kind of business as a whole. Like, um. And that's why I, I picked it because I wasn't sure what specific area I wanted to get into. Like, and I don't know how, especially kids, young kids coming out doing their leaving cert now, I don't know how they decide <laughs> I want to be a doctor or I want to be an accountant and go and do an accountancy thing. Or do, I'm like, what? You're they're only 18, like, and they get there, they and then it becomes hard then for them to change their mind after doing four years of even if you're an engineer or something, you know. But um, luckily enough, someone had had told me, I forget who it was um it might have been actually from letter kenny it might have been kelly and morrison he, he had been in ucd at the time yeah i think i was on to him talking to him because he was a stock player as well and he had told he kind of advised me um to keep your options open because you can always do a master's like yeah. so you do your undergrad and then if you want to you know whatever way you want to kind of pivot towards whatever kind of route you want to go down you can just go and do a master's in that route to become specialized then so that was my plan um to dip your toe into like all different aspects of it, accountancy or whatever, and then uh, to do it after a few years and to go and do a master's in whatever I find most interesting. Like, and that ended up in finance. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm doing a master's at the minute now. And uh, as you said, it's Murphy in renewable energy and finance. So, yeah. Very good. Yeah, you're you're on the ball in terms of where things are going, I suppose, in terms yeah. of the renewable energy. Yeah, yeah, that's the plan, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you kind of decide on that? Is there something that, that you're really interested in? Maybe obviously going from Donegal, I don't know if that made any difference at all, but... Not, uh... not really. I, I could I would, I'd be lying if I said it was. Um, yeah. I just kind of... I was at Dundalk at the time and I took I took like a year out deciding to try and find, figure out exactly what I wanted to do and what masters I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and then ended up just landed on that one. Like it was a small kind of niche little masters. And it's an interesting area, as you say, in a growing area. Um, and something that I was interested in that I found myself kind of always reading about. Like, so it was perfect like, fit. It was perfect fit for me. Like in fact, I was in Dublin, it was close enough as well. Like it's yeah. it's one, it's the only, I think someone was saying it's one of the only uh masters in Europe that focuses on on the specifics of renewable energy and finance, that that kind of core mix. Yeah. So, um as you say, hopefully it'll be valuable now in, in, in the coming years. That was my that's my thinking. Like nice strategic one there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Very good. Um, so I suppose you're coming to the end of your time in Dundalk and, and you, you get the move then. Um once again, just tell me about you know what it's like, I suppose, you know, picking up everything and moving to a different place and kind of set, settling into a new team as well. Yeah, it's 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 difficult enough, and that happens a lot in the League of Ireland. Um players kind of jump and shift at the end of every year because contracts, they tend to be short-term contracts in, in the league. Like, um, But uh, no, yeah, I was, I was looking up. I had a few different options at, at that time. Um, 
and Bowes ended up, Bohemians ended up kind of being, to be honest, the big factor in, in signing for Bowes was the fact that uh, the Masters was there, like the Masters was in, in like right beside me in, in Dublin. So, and also Bowes are, Bowes are part-time, or well, they're, they train in the evenings, essentially. Mm. So it made that like I could go to college or whatever during the day, it wouldn't clash with training. Uh, and then you could go in and train then in the evening. So it was a perfect fit in that sense. And they were happy to support me and um, with the Masters as well and, 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 and different bits and help cover it a little bit. But so it's it was a win-win there. And that, that was a big, that was a huge factor. Like, Yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. And, and I suppose you mentioned earlier about how you were kind of balancing the, the leaving serve with playing the football as well. But I suppose going into a Masters program, there's a bit more workload. Um, now, I know obviously that was some of it maybe might have been online as well, but even for your own sanity, you know, staying inside, being on the, the, the laptop the whole day and then going outside to, to play football is probably nearly a release for you, I suppose, and, and a bit of a break from the studies. It does, yeah. <clears throat> and it works both ways. Like you could be when say when things even when things aren't going well, yeah. on, or you've bad games or sessions or are shit or whatever, and you're struggling, like um it's a it's a release from from that world of football as well. Cause when you're a full-time footballer, like that's everything, you know what I mean? That's the only thing that you're you're doing, yeah. you're focusing on. So even when you're at the dock, like you're 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 bringing that home with you, and you're everything's just about football. So, but when you can have you're in the masters, it gives you a little separate kind of avenue to kind of shift your focus. Like, um, so that was I find that kind of nice little distraction to have away from, yeah, you know, away from the pressures of, of football. Like, yeah, yeah, and and I suppose from your own experience of of playing with boys from from Ireland mainly, I suppose, and and in different different locations and stuff, was that. A common theme that people would have uh, some studies to kind of fall back on or either you know doing at the same time or was your position a bit unique um mine's probably it's probably a little bit unique there's probably not as enough uh lads uh, kind of switched on to to the fact that they probably should be doing a little bit um even if it's just taking over like and doing little small little entry courses or or something like but um a, a lot of a lot of players I've noticed that have just kind of have this sole focus that I'm we're, I'm going to be a footballer like and that's kind of been you know uh, like drilled into them probably since a young age like so yeah that's yeah I've noticed that quite a, a lot now there is there is exceptions and it's changing a little bit now like I think um, like UCD is the UCD is kind of the, the pinnacle the perfect option where you can go to, go to college and, and, and play uh, and mix the both kind of at a good level. But now America, as you said, kind of is becoming a new option as well for players to go on scholarships and stuff. Um, and there's more colleges here, even in Ireland, kind of transitioning off from good scholarships and probably playing at a good level. So hopefully that will now, over the coming years, more and more, like more and more League of Ireland players will start to like transition and, and mix and doing both because it is it is compatible and you can do it. Like and I've like I've done it this year and I've had a good year. Um and it hasn't impacted me on the pitch either like so it's yeah it's definitely doable definitely and and you you mentioned as well about the distraction that it can give you and you know it kind of fuels you as well the same thing you'd get energy off you know being productive and having all that stuff yeah. on your plate as well like um so it's it's great to see someone being successful and, and being able to balance both i suppose um so obviously you know one aspect of, of being able to keep up the academics you obviously see that there's a career after football as well um you know is there is there, an, is there an idea that you have in your head, I suppose, for where you want to be after your career and what kind of area you want to be working in? Or do you want to go into coaching or do you have any idea about, you know, after you finish up your footballing career? Yeah, um, not, not as I'm still, even that's what I'm saying, I still don't fully know exactly what, exactly which area I want to go into. Like my master's, again, it's a little bit, it's a little bit broad, like it's renewable energy and that kind of um, climate finance and, and that kind of stuff. But there's loads of different avenues as well, but um, I'll love to go down some sort of route, whether it be like renewables, project financing, or mm-hmm. or um, yeah, even maybe even asset management and and uh, you know you know ASG asset management. There's loads of different routes uh, that, that you can head down. I don't really know what I'm doing yet, to be honest. I'll yeah. probably I'll probably try and kind of dip into an internship. Um, and kind of dip my toe in different areas to see exactly where where I want to do over the next. Uh, couple of years if I can try and, and mix it in again because I'll, I'll probably try it's worked out well like so I'll probably try and keep keep mixing it if I can you know what I mean yeah exactly so you might go back sure for another one like sure yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. Exactly. <laughs> um so I suppose moving kind of into a numerous education and and how you were first introduced that's just talk me through you know what you think of the program and, and how you got in contact with it 
Yeah, um, at my time when I was at Dundalk, I played with uh, Tanir, um, yeah. Tanir Dugan, who's and he's he kind of works now alongside just there at numerous. So he introduced me to it and, and told me about what's going on there. Um, and I just think I think it's a cool idea. Like it's um, uh, it's fantastic, Daniel. The you know that the idea and what's and, and I couldn't kind of believe how much you were providing to for so little. You know what I mean? Uh. You know, it's a, the fact that it's like a land for profit and how on how it's and how you're working. Um, just that was fantastic. And and because I kind of t- I'd taken that route, I've kind of had experience in scholarship to and then transitioning towards you know professional sports. Um, it's an avenue that a lot of kids can can probably kind of or a lot more kids can probably go down and take, and they probably don't realize that them options are there a lot of the time. Uh, and it's just about accessing them. So it like it, it provides a, a really perfect kind of pathway for for kids to kind of go and and and, and jump at them at them opportunities, you know. Exactly. Yeah, like we've had a few few people on, I suppose, talking to them over the last couple of weeks, um, you know, that have been availing of the opportunity to go over to America and to balance both and, and to study at a really high level, but also, you know, the American soccer scene is growing, you know, from strength to strength every year, like so. Um, it's good to be able to see both, I suppose, and, and having someone like yourself on at the minute is kind of showing that there are pathways and career pathways, both in soccer and academics in Ireland, which is very important as well. Um, and it's something that, that the programme is kind of looking to, to show, you know, students coming into their leaving search cycle as well, some of the options that, that are out there. Um, you decided to come on as a patron or a sponsor as well for the numerous programmes, so we really appreciate that. But just w- what kind of... Do you think that you're able to relate to some of the things yourself, like you were mentioning earlier, or is that kind of one of the key drivers, I suppose, in, in terms of contributing to the program? Yeah, it, it absolutely is. Like you, as I was saying, it's helped me massively. Like, and there's loads of kids. I've been lucky um, that I kind of, as I as you hear from my story, that I kind of just fell in. Luckily, fell into to to scholarships and different things. But um, like I know how important they would they would are to certain people and. To be given ha- even at the half a chance or a glimpse of that chance to to go and snatch at a lot loads of people would avail of it like um especially young kids from from disadvantaged areas like so it's uh it's important it's really important that people you know uh, like can you know this this that kind of idea of like equality of opportunities where people can you know who 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 would be able to you know to grasp these chances can get that opportunity to take it like um. And I can kind of relate to that a little bit. So yeah, it's um, it's it's fantastic what you're doing there at Numerous. I think it's unreal. Yeah, it's good stuff. Um, I suppose just to finish up, Georgie, if you if you had one, you know, bit of advice for for students coming into their leaving cert cycle, I suppose in terms of you know they're they're playing at a really high level in, in in soccer, playing for for their for their club, and they're looking towards towards university. What would you kind of say to them in terms of you've been through that system now? You've been through kind of balancing both. What would you kind of say to them? Um, I would say that it's, it's really difficult. Like I've seen unbelievable players come at 17, 18, even coming to college with me. Like you would be shocked at how difficult it is and how, um, lucky you need to be to, 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 to make it and be successful kind of, um, there's so much competition with between players and positions and, uh, you know, through all the country and all the world, like you're competing with um you know like loads and loads of talent so it's i my my i would kind of advise anyone no matter how good players are like i've seen like unreal players and just just like that can drop off when you know different things don't go their way injuries like anything can happen um i would advise like people especially coming onto this course and and working with the numerous to really focus on that academic side of it like and to kind of delve in to try and understand what like what really interests you at that age i know it's probably not easy like but um to try and focus more so on the academic side and then if the if the scholarship and if the soccer can can aid that then that's what that's that's the perfect kind of mix you know what i mean it shouldn't be soccer first i'm going here because uh we'll play good soccer and we'll play we have a good team or whatever it needs to be which which kind of academic course will suits me the best where can i you know what am I really interested in? What can work on? You know, where can I work on that side of it? Like so, which is probably not easy to tell a seventeen or eighteen year old kid that, but that's um, that's really important, and that's half the battle then. And then once you can kind of focus on that, then the soccer, no matter what, then will be whether whether it works out for you or whether it doesn't, then you're at least recovered. You know what I mean? And there's 
you have, as you say, you have something to fall back on because it's so competitive and it's not easy and you need a bit of luck. Like I've got extremely lucky in, in, in how where I've got to where I have like, um, and as I said, I've seen so many kind of go the other way for, for so many good kind of hardworking lads who, you know, who there's no lack of work or effort. Like, so it's, yeah. um, it's fine margins, but I, I would just say, yeah, focus on the education side of it and, and, and try to really figure out what, what interests you like. Yeah. Very good. No, I think it's great coming from, from someone like yourself that has been able to balance both as well. So um, hopefully now we get the, the message across and get a few brilliant applicants yeah. coming in. So look, okay. Georgie, uh, we'll wrap it up there. Really appreciate it again, coming on, taking time out of your day and um, hope you enjoy your now, your few weeks after your studies and get back into the swing of things now in the new year. So thanks again. Hopefully. Not at all, Ned. Not at all. Cheers. <laughs>